connector. Um, it gathers a bunch of facts about the system. This is kind of what helps it figure out what's going on. Then I'm setting up a repo. I get the repo key. You just notice here too that, that gathering facts said, okay, this means nothing changed on the system at that point. Now I'm in the task EPL repo and I'm, uh, I'm installing, it, as these will go out of order too because it's actually running these in parallel. All three machines are being run in parallel. I get the repo, I get a repo key, and I forgot when I installed the first time. It's going to take a while to get all the repo data, but you'll see it'll actually, it's installing basic packages. You'll actually see a list of the packages installed here in a few seconds once it finishes. And then it'll go on and then it, you know, add like my keys, configure the firewall, et cetera, based off of groups and stuff. We'll go over templates here in two in a second because that's kind of what the big thing is. Um, hopefully this doesn't take too long. I guess while I'm waiting, is there any questions so far? Yeah? Do you use this at home as well as work? I don't yet, but I have plans to because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't tell. Couldn't yeah. Tell. I saw on, on the one uh, screen you had action like yum, for example. Yes. I mean, are, are those actions defined by you and some of these YML files? Or are those, you know, yeah, so yum is obviously a very uh, red hat generic the, Yeah, so they, they have a bunch of modules give for given things. So you can, and in using, right now since I'm using, I know for a fact that these are yum. I'm, I'm not worried about testing, just make sure yum is installed. But you can actually use one of those basic facts, or what you can do is you can test to see is the package manager for the system yum? And if it is, then you can say, run this action with the yum module. If it's app, you run the app module instead. So here you can see I added all the, the root keys. Uh, ooh, I failed. So, oh, that's right. Uh, I forgot. I, since I, this is a bastardized playbook then, so I wasn't using the same one. So hold on. Please. Uh, Uh, <coughs> it's a table gone wild, huh? There we go. Which one was that? Scripts. I just pulled all the IMG scripts from. <laughs> so, okay, so here's the cool part. So, uh, keys should be there now. So I shouldn't have that. What's cool is you'll start to see that those packages uh, were already installed, so when it gets to... The stuff, now I notice how this time around I'm running it, these tasks didn't fail last time, so they're all okay, and I haven't made any changes to my actions, so essentially it skips them. So now we, we're already done, we already know we have Vim Enhance, HTOP, SE Linux, Python, and Screen installed. Um, some have, but this is a bug that I found that I'm actually actually trying to work on and commit back upstream, I hope I can get it done. Uh, I add all my public keys, uh, these are already done. I've already added the Bash RC, our customizations that we do. Uh, NTP's already done. Uh, step tickers should be done. Uh, so I hadn't gotten to this point yet. I forgot what that actually is. I'll have to look. <laughs> so then I'm, I'm adding all of our, our employees in as users. So there's a user module, so you can add modules. And you can, either, you can either have it prompt you in the middle of the playbook for the password for each one if you want. Or well, the way I have it set up right now is I just have a hash, the whole the whole hash with the, the salt is in there, and then you just throw it in. So it just, what's that? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> so uh, IP tables, I want to go over that, another one too, because that, that's important. Um, and what happens is it notifies. So here's what's cool too, is that um, uh, if, if you have a, so like IP tables had a change, you can actually notify. So if, if the configuration changed from what, what it had before, you can say notify uh, this, uh, you don't want to say, like notify this area, it's like a go-to essentially at the end. But what it does is you can actually make multiple changes to IP tables. So if you're running three or four playbooks at once, and they all, or one playbook but you're making multiple different changes to the same service, as long as you can have them, each one of those changes can notify and say, hey, you've got to restart IP tables. But it'll actually wait until all of those are done before it actually restarts IP tables. So all your notifications and restarts happen after. So I restarted SSHD and restarted IP tables because it's different. I also have like an inventory files uh, thing that I called that I purposefully, you, it doesn't have to be a restarting a service. We'll go over that in a second. But uh, I have it so that like it runs this one command at one point at the end when I know it's configured so I can actually add it to my. Do you control the order in which the uh, services are restarted? 
Uh, I believe so. Um, I haven't had to try to look it up, but I'm almost positive you can do it. There, it, there might be some, I don't want to say hacky, but you might have to do a little bit of working around to make that happen, but I, I'm pretty sure you can do that. It, the worst case scenario is you say, you just say, if it's like, if it's a re, if it's always something that's always going to be in that order, you can just say like, like for example, our Bacula thing, you've got to restart the file, and the, there's three different demons you've got to restart in a certain order, and then they've got to start up in a certain order. You can say, you can just say restart Bacula, and then like the first line is stop this demon, this next line is stop demon that. And as long as you know it's always the same, you can just do it that way. It doesn't have to be one service. It's essentially the notification is just go to this action, this list of actions, and then you can go there. I'll show you in a second. Um, so uh, I want to show. So let's let's actually do that. So let's look into the templates here. So uh, well, first let me look at the playbook. So then. Playbooks, tasks, firewall.yaml. So in this case, every time I'm calling firewall, th that's all this is. I say I'm configuring IP tables. I'm running the template command. I'm telling it, here's the template to run from. It's got, it's a Jinja, which is a, it's a Python library basically. You just, you all you have to do is make sure your templates are in a certain format. And then you're saying the destination I want it to go to etc sysconfig IP tables. It's got to be owned by root, and it's got to have those particular uh, permissions. Then I'm notifying IP tables. Uh, tags, I'm not using them. We can go over them later. They're not really important. So then what happens is, let's look at the actual template. Um, so here I have uh, a bunch of things here. And it's hard to see because they all the same color. It doesn't go here. But like here is part of the actual template. So if, if I'm saying, if KVM is in the group name, so because remember at the beginning when I said they were in group names, if I wanted to change this so that this happened, I could change this to uh, a log underscore servers, and that would match all three of the ones I have so far. Does that make sense? Um, and so then what would happen is it would go, it would add this line in, and then there's my end if. In this case, I'm not doing much anything much more uh, complicated than this, but you can actually do some other cool things too. Like you can do variable substitution, so you can say like for each item in and this list, you can then say do this, 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 and this. You know, you can just do a substitution. It could be like a short loop, and then it comes through. It's essentially you will wait for you to. Uh, for those, that, Jinja is actually for uh, Django's. Um, it's a it's a web template essentially. It's the same concept. Um, except we're just using it for config files. So then what will happen is, like, for example, we'll show this in a second. Um, if I have Apache 2 is in your group names, then I want you to do these two firewalls. Open up port 880 and open up port 443. So um, that's essentially, I don't have anything much more than that. So essentially what will happen is, it will then, when it comes through, that template function will come through and it will check, okay, am I in KVM? No. Then it skips and it goes down here. And so then it'll actually print out all these, and then it'll say, okay, am I in the FTP group? No. And so it skips all the way down to here. Okay, then it'll add these two. And then am I in the Apache group? Yes. Okay, I'll add this one, and I'll add this one. All right, I'll keep adding, I'll add these two no matter what. Am I in the MySQL group? No. Okay, I'll script all the way down. That's essentially kind of how these go. And you'll notice here, because KVM has to require some that are state-driven and some that are not, at least the way I had it set up, you'll notice that I have the, you can have the same variable more than once in the, in the thing. So. Um, so, it, so it's a matter of where it is in the script. Yeah, so essentially it literally just goes from top to bottom and then evaluates those ifs, that, that uh, tag, which is the curly bracelet with the, with the modulus, the, the percent sign. It, those it, it knows, that's just, that's the one thing you can't like, you have to escape it if you actually want that to show up in your, your template. But essentially that's what it does, it goes from top to bottom, it just, if there's no evaluation, it just prints that line out as if that's what and needs to go in. in place in that exact spot? Yes. So that's why I had, that's why I had two KVM groups, because I needed one at the top for the physical device um, forwarding, and then one at the bottom for a state-driven type, uh, I needed to open up the libvert thing back and forth to my shit. Sorry, my language. Um, but essentially, you can have it more than once. So it'll go down and it'll evaluate, am I in the group? And then if it is yes, it, it adds the lines between, essentially, so like, let me go back into it here. So you know, these lines, for example, when the, when the templating function comes through, it'll say, it'll call, let's just do this first. The first line will say, OK, this isn't anything I recognize. I print it out. 
This isn't anything I printed out. Uh, print out, print out, print out, print out, print out, print out. Hey, I recognize this line as a, a logic statement. So now I have to evaluate it. Okay, am I in the KVM group? No. All right, so I skip. Uh, I skip this line, and I'll come back down here. Okay, there's nothing in this line. Print out, 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 print out. Oh, here's another one. I am in. Am I in the FTP group? Yes, I am. So I will print out this line, this on this on this on this on this line. Okay, that's the end of that if. All right, then I'll go down. That's essentially how it happens. It just goes right down the list in a sequence. Is there a tool to like do a diff onto config files and then just automatically build this stuff for you? Uh, what do you mean? So to reverse engineer the the, the logic for that, like to, to say you had one that had like a line insert of here, here, and here. Could you just oh. do a diff and it would just print out where you need to send that? Uh, no idea. Okay. Could be, but I don't know of it. Because I could take my high. Yeah. Because libvert adds stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm guessing the answer is yes, or if not, I'm sure it can't be too hard to create something similar. But essentially, I don't know how customizable you'd have to make it. I don't know of the tool off the top of my head. At least I don't know of it coming. Uh, I don't have any documentation for any of it. So. You just use dim in order to create free stuff. Yep. I just, I, I, what I did was I actually just took like the, the vanilla one. Figured out which ones I needed to add based off of a bunch of other rules that I had and scripts I had stuck around, and then just plugged them into this at, in various intervals, and then said. But there's not an IDE development environment where it would understand what is needed. No, because it's a it's a it, well uh, take that back. No, Jinja is a is a part of uh, Django. So if you have an IDE that knows Django, a Django process, which is a, a a Python project, uh, it should be able to understand that this is a template. You say 2.2. I don't know what IDEs do that. I personally just use Vim because I'm just that's what I'm used to. So, um, so let me show you one last part here. So if I go uh, playbooks handlers, uh, I have I just have one that includes all of my handlers. So I, at the end of every playbook, I just say include handlers because if they're not used, they're not used. It's not a big deal. But I have them all here. So the first one I have is IP tables. So um, here, let me do this. Tabby uh, playbooks sent to no, no no tasks viral. So uh, if you see here, I say notify IP tables, right? Or notify, and then uh, I'm naming the notification restart IP tables. Okay. Uh, playbooks sent to us. Then at the end of this, I say handlers include all my handlers, right? And then if I go into here and I say, okay, so now I'm now all of these are registered. All of these actions are registered as different handlers. So the first one here is restart IP tables. So when this is kind of where it comes in, it's this. This is just a label. This is not a command. I can name this, you know, Bozo the Clown. And then as long as this name here is Bozo the Clown, the action will happen, right? So the name is just a, is a label. And then I say, action, I want the service. I want the service named IP tables. And I want its state to be restarted. So in this case, only after the template shows that it was a difference was made, it'll actually notify and say, you need to restart IP tables. If it runs a template and compares it and says, hey, there's no change here, you don't restart IP tables. IP tables is still running. Does that make sense? All right, let's do one more fun thing. Um, actually, let's do, I'm going to show this. So, okay, so if I do an IP tables, uh, that might not be the best way to do this. So if I do vim, PC, config, IP tables. Okay, so you see, it's actually a fairly short thing. And without, you can trust me if you don't want to all read the whole thing, but right now, there's no rules for Apache, right? It's just a pretty basic, you've got, uh, you know, um, this is for SMP. I'm oh, sorry, this is SMP, I think. I forget what 663 six, six, three, six, three, one is. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyway, so uh, it's pretty basic, right? So now let's run. Now I want to create a new group called Apache 2, but I only want. Uh, I should probably do one more thing, sorry. Uh, A log 2. Uh, 
And I'm going to do the same thing. So then, cat, uh, etc, Alright, so essentially they're both the same thing, right? So thing one and thing two are exactly the same, right? So I'm switching between the two real quick here. So now let's actually, I added Apache 2 lug, right? So now I'm going to run um, a playbook, Ansible playbook. I'll show you the playbook actually too. Then playbook Apache 2. Um, so here I have uh, all the hosts. This here tells me which hosts I want to match. So the other thing is that I don't have to tell uh, Ansible Playbook which hosts to run on if I don't want. I can just make that a part of the playbook so that I'm always making sure that it's always running on this group and I don't have to worry about accidentally fat fingering something. So I'm running as the user root and these are the tasks. I'm going to install Apache and the certain modules that I want. I'm going to replace all of my default configurations with what I want and make sure, so here's another one that, uh, let me just make sure I don't, so right here, this is a template function, so this is the same sort of deal. Uh, I, here's the other thing, I can do this file, this is a file module, what I can do is I can say I want the path uh, with, that starts with etc, httpd, conf, slash, and then I want ssl.key, ssl.cert, ssl.csr, CSR. I want all of those to be present because I want, I want them to be directors. That's what the state directory means. Um, you can stay, if you say state absent, it makes sure they're gone. If you have nothing here, it doesn't care if it's there or not, right? So that's how it works. It's, it's you describe what you want, and then it makes it happen. Um, templates, files, templates, and that's it. So then I run handlers. Okay. So I'm going to run that uh, Ansible playbook, playbook, patches. Notice, oh, I failed. Oh. I wonder what that is. Don't. Exactly. <laughs> oh, uh, maybe. I don't think so. Well, this is in my assignment. <laughs> um, it is okay. What is it, echo zero? I forget. I, so my problem is because I don't have the SE Linux set, set up yet. So I don't have, uh, it won't allow certain. Thank you. Yeah, it's called Nasus the same. Can you just run arbitrary commands with Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, Ansible, uh, Ayla, Ansible, Centaur, 630, uh, dash M for module, I'll say command.